وهو نصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وضابا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد جزاكم الله خيرا فجوينين and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of you my dears we're just coming towards the completion of our Quran how are all of you? Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Okay, quick, what did you learn? Did you learn anything from last lesson? What were, what were your action points that you have taken for yourself? Okay, be humble. Okay. Now, you're not supposed to repeat uh, your, uh, you know, you're going to tell me every, every juice that we do, you're going to tell me some new points that you have. Um, Allah has the power of everything. Gratitude for every yes. Okay, alhamdulillah. Ayn came from the heaven. The forerunners, mashallah, sister Fahima, very well said. We and we make dua that we are going to be from the sabiqun, the forerunners. Yes, alhamdulillah. It, it is so important to give charity. Yeah, spend on more on deen. Yes, don't be stingy. Yeah, you learned, sister Muhammad. You said you learned the purpose of our creation. Balance life. Yes, sister Fahima. Very very important. That Islam does not say that you become. A monk, and you don't, you know, uh, leave the dunya. And as well, uh, Islam, uh, you know, does not teach us that we should be, uh, you know, be too involved in dunya. So we should have a balance of both. Okay, alhamdulillah. Lots and lots of istighfar. Quran is easy to understand. Yes. So if me and you, if we're not able to understand, then there is a problem in us and not the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are not able to memorize the Quran, then, you know, we need to, uh, hope only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's true. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Um, okay. What else? Give people their rights. Repel evil with good. Okay. Repel evil with good was something we've done before. But anyway, yeah. Only work for pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not the people. Yes. And uh, three groups in Jannah. Yes, three categories of people that experience death. Yeah, teach your children um, uh, and family the Quran. Okay, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are going to begin our just 28. Um, have you invited your friends? Have you sent an invitation the, uh, for 29 and 30? Yes, alhamdulillah. You know, that's enough. That if you've sent your invitation, you've done your job, they come or not come, understand that that is going to be from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that you and I are seated here, we should not take any credit for it. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who chose us and has a, a, a seated us in front of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so I can read and you can hear. So, you know, it is nothing, no credit to us. And we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So you will have done the job, Alhamdulillah. We're going to start our just 28. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in our time. I'm going to close the chats now. I love you all too, my dears, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please send the link. Um, sister, the same link that you sent for your class, that's the link that you can share. Okay. Um, so we're going to begin with uh, Jews 28, Alhamdulillah. Um, and we, the first surah is Surah Al Mujadila. And uh, Mujadila, Mujadila comes from the word Jadal. And Mujadila, because close time in the end indicates it's got to do with the feminine. So it is about the woman who disputes. And overall, in this surah, there are nine, in this Jews are nine surahs. 
And subhanAllah, all of them are Madani surahs. And Surah Mujadila is the only surah in the Quran in which the word Allah is mentioned in every ayah. And a oh, 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 total of 40 times is mentioned in the surah. Subhanallah. So you see, you know, the more you learn the Quran and the more you know about the Quran, you realize how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala values the, the woman, the female, and the emotions, her emotions are valued. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, protects her and, and listens to her. Let's learn and let's see. Surah Al-Mujadila, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim, Bismillahi Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ يَسْمَعُ تَحَاوُرَكُمَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ Certainly has Allah heard the speech of the one who argues with you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, concerning her husband. And directs her complaint to Allah. I would like you to underline. وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهِ she directs her complaint to Allah and Allah hears your dialogue. Indeed, Allah is hearing and seeing. Samir and Basir. So what, you know, we've mentioned this before as well, that, you know, there was a pre-Islamic, in the Arabs, there was a tradition known as Zihar, the law, Zihar, in which the man would say to his wife that you are, you are, you are like the back of my mother, meaning, you know, forever i will never be intimate with you anymore so you're not lawful for me uh, you know uh, you so you are unlawful for me just like how my mother was unlawful how my mother is unlawful for me to approach that is what i'm going to do so you know they would not divorce her but they would just leave her dangling so you know th that was the tradition at the time and the sahabi who did who said this and the the sahabi who comes and complains her name is khawla so uh, Khawla comes and, uh, you know, complains because her husband, who is a Sahabi, Aus bin uh, Samit, he is, uh, you know, he, he said that. And Khawla Anha was an old woman and her children were very young. So, you know, she was worried what is going to happen to her family. You know, who's going to be, uh, you know, who's going to be supporting her. And then look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says she was complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, of her, you know, of her worries and her uh, and her hurt, and she wanted to seek a solution. You see, Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam kept quiet at that time because there was no rule concerning this. And Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Qad sami Allah." Indeed, Allah has heard. Allah has heard. Allah who is above the seven heavens. Uh, Allah who is Allah, Rabb al-Samawati wal Ard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard her complaint. Um, and you see Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, you know, praise be to Allah who is hearing, whose hearing encompasses all voices. The woman who disputed concerning her husband, meaning the mujadila, the one who was disputing, she came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam when I was sitting in the corner of the house. And you see the house of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam was not, a, uh, not an extremely big one. It was quite a small house. So you, you see, I, Aisha radiallahu anha was sitting in another corner. And, and, you know, she says that she could not, uh, I, she says, I did not hear what she said. And Allah revealed this ayat for her. Okay. So, you know, it is so important that we, we learn from here that we, when we are saddened by whatever is happening in our lives, yeah, don't tell people your problems. Especially don't tell your parents, my dears, because between husband and wife, you have problems. Don't tell, unless, unless there's an abuse happening, unless there's something that's going to threaten your life, then for sure get help. But you know, just the bickering that happens, the, you know, the, the, you know, the constant arguments that are happening, don't mention it to your parents. Why? Because you two are going to get over it. Uh, and, you know, just, just going to be happy again. But the thing is that it, that will leave a mark on, in your parents' hearts for your husband. And, you know, they're not going to look at him the same way. And you wouldn't like that, would you? So, and we learn the Quranic manner is that, you know, complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge of everything. So what you're going to do, action point for you, that you're going to say, you know, Ya Rab, you solve my problem. 
for me. Ya Allah, I complain to you about whatever is happening in your life. Okay? And uh, what happened then? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ayah number two, those, those who pronounce zihar among you to separate from their wives, they are, they are not consequently your mothers. Yeah, just by saying she does not become your mother. Their mothers are none but the ones who gave birth to them. And indeed, they are saying an objectionable statement and a falsehood. But indeed, Allah is pardoning and forgiving afu and ghafur. And you see, we are going to be embarking on the ten day, ten last ten days, increase in Allah in the afu and to hibul afwa faafwani. This dua, make sure you increase that. Okay, so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that if they repent, if this sahabi repents and anyone who's done this, they repent and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them. And those who pronounce the heart from their wives and then wish to go back on what they said, then there must be the freeing of a slave before they touch one another. So now that you've done something, so, you know, there has to be a penalty. There has to be a kafara that has to be paid. And who has to pay the kafara? The husband has to pay. Why? Because for the reason that what he said, number one is, and it has to go in the order. It cannot be, you can just pick and choose. Number one, freeing the slave. That is what you are admonished thereby. Meaning you have to pay the penalty and Allah is acquainted with what you do. And he who does not find a slave, meaning like in today's time, you don't find a slave. Then, then fast, then a fast for two months consecutively. So, now the consecutively is important. So for some reason, this person does not fast one of the days. So the cycle breaks. He's going to start all over again. Okay. So, uh, you know, then fast it, uh, for two months consecutively before they touch one another. And he who is unable, then feeding of 60 poor persons. So the third option is that you have to feed three, uh, 60 uh, uh, poor people. So you see, what is it telling us? It is telling us the importance of keeping the tongue in control. And, you know, very, very important that what people say that it is of value. And that is for you to believe completely in Allah and his messenger. And those are the limits set by Allah. And, the dis and for the disbelievers is a painful punishment. You see, all this, what does it show you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is protecting the emotions of a woman. Yeah, because she's hurt. So you see, and also that even for the women, you know, sometimes if you, you know, under the influence of emotions, you say a lot to your husbands. We all tend to say, we all tend to cross the limits because, you know, sometimes it's the hormones, sometimes it's everything. It's a mix of everything. So it's very important that we need to mind our language. We might we need to not make our tongue say something that we regret later. Yeah. So uh, now with this, with these eyes, we find that you know anyone who had said zihar at the time, you know, it does not marriage. It does not affect the marriage. There is no divorce. Yeah. And it is a major sin because there is a penalty attached with it. In ayah number five, indeed, those who oppose Allah and His Messenger are. Uh, are humiliated as those before them were humiliated. And we have certainly sent down verses of the clear uh, for of clear evidence and for the believers is a hum for the disbelievers is a humiliating punishment, meaning anyone who rejects the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not act upon it, belittles it, then you know that person this that this action of theirs is going to be a cause of humiliation for them in this world and in the hereafter. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who opposes my command, my matter, my instruction, then humiliation and abasement will be stuck on him. Yeah, so in this dunya and in the akhirah, this person is going to be humiliated. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. On the day when, when Allah will resurrect them all and inform them of what they did, Allah had enumerated it while they forgot. And Allah is over all things uh, witness meaning and when a person so many people they keep sinning they keep sinning and then sometimes they forget as well that they have sinned i mean if you just look back and reflect even 10 years ago do you remember the things that you had done wrong sometimes maybe a lot from the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds you but sometimes humans forget 
but it is very important to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forget. So what are we going to do? We have to be careful from now about our actions, about our statements, you know, and you know, even about sometimes, you know, just giving someone a look. Be careful about that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, does not forget. So, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for all the sins that we have done knowingly and unknowingly, openly and secretly in the past. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us, um, you know, give us the ability to not do all those sins again. I mean, I number seven, have you not considered that Allah knows what is in the heavens and what is on, on the earth? And there is no private conversation of um, uh, of three, but, the, but that he is the fourth of them. Yeah, and nor are, are there five, but he's the sixth of them, and no less than that, and no more, except that he is with, uh, with them in knowledge wherever they are. Then he will inform them of what they did on the day of resurrection. Indeed, Allah is of all things knowing. So you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of all the secretive talks people do. So we have to be careful. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Taqweer that everything is going to be exposed. So we have to be wary for all the secret conversations. Maybe we may hide from the people, but on the day of judgment, all these secretive conversations are going to be exposed and publicized. May Allah protect us. Have you not considered those who were forbidden from private conversation? Then they return to that which they were forbidden and converse among themselves about sin and aggression and disobedience to the messenger. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about? The hypocrites. Yeah, they would talk to each other quietly and secretly. And about what? About, uh, you know, aggression against the people, about disobeying the Prophet sallallahu And when they come to you, they greet you with that word by which Allah does not greet you and say among themselves, why does Allah not punish us for what we say? Meaning, you know, they, they think that immediately the punishment has not seized them. So they think that they are, they are correct in what they're doing. Sufficient for them is hell in which they will enter to burn and wretched is the destination. You see, uh, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, you know, she said once some Jews came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said, Abul Qasim, assalam alaykum, assalam alaykum, not assalam, not assalam, not assalam, but assalam alaykum. Meaning, you know, they, you know, they are, they not even calling Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his name. They don't even say Rasulullah. What do they call him with his kunya, Abu Qasim? And the meaning of Assam Alaikum is may death be upon you. So you see how they twist and turn the words. Um, uh, so we have to be, and also, you know, among some cultures, it's so, you know, the thing is they say, uh, uh, instead of say, saying Assalamu Alaikum or Assalamu Alaikum, you know, they say it in other ways. So be careful because you don't want to twist your word in such a way that it means something else. So, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he replied, Wa Alaikum. He just said, Wa Alaikum. And Aisha Radiallahu was there and, and she heard what happened. So she responded and she said, and may the, uh, you know, the curse be upon you and the, you know, may the um, humiliation uh, be upon you. I mean, she was really upset why that why those people said that, and she's replying back. And she went on. Um, uh, so the Prophet وسلم, said, O oh, Aisha, do not use harsh words. She said, Didn't you hear what they said? Nabi وسلم, said, Did I not respond to them when they said, I just said to them, Wa alaykum, and you too. And maybe uh, 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 may it be on you as well. So Nabi وسلم, you know. He used to greet, what do we learn? That he used to greet the, the you know, the enemies also, you know, um, you know, in, in a way that he would not go, he would not stoop to their level low. Uh, despite the fact that, you know, you see Aisha Radiallahu getting so upset, but Nabi Sallallahu responded in a very calculated manner. Yeah, you Ladina Amanu, and the ones, oh, the ones who you, Oh, you who have believed, when you converse privately, do not converse about sin and aggression and disobedience to them, to the man, uh, to the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So you see, we are being taught some manners here. So when you are when you are seated with people, so you know, don't try and get you know two people sit down and start having um, um, secret conversations. 
uh, and but Allah subhanahu wa says but converse about righteousness and piety and fear Allah to whom you will be gathered and um, you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, you know we, we need to fear Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectifies our be behaviors and what we are being told here that you know you can you're not supposed to have private conversations unless if you want to talk about you know someone is doing something wrong so you want to correct them and you want to reform them then you can you know have a private conversation and where you know in a gathering especially if you're in a gathering don't have private conversations just you know two people gather gather together and have and other people are watching you don't do that uh, and the second thing is if you want to give charity if you want to give charity, then you can have some secret conversation. But other than that, no. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says private conversation is only from shaitan, that he may grieve those who have believed. But he will not harm them at all, except by the permission of Allah. And upon Allah, let the believers rely. See, you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares about the emotions of other people. Imagine you're going to a party and you and your friend, you, you meet your best friend there. And you start having conversation with her, and the rest of the people they just left. And you know, uh, you know, maybe there are four, maybe other people have got some friends, but there are three or four people who don't know, who don't have anyone to talk to. So you see, this is how Shaitan attacks people. Then, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala cares about the emotions, and He's teaching us manners that don't get into private conversations involve everybody. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when, when you are three people sitting together, then no two of you should hold secret counsel, excluding the third person, until you are, you are with some other people too, for, for, that, for that would grieve them. So you see, the third person is going to feel bad. So try and avoid those, you know, you two get on and, and you leave the third person, um, you know, on their own. Um, oh, you who have believed, when you are told, space yourselves in assemblies, then make space. Allah will make space for you. Underline this very, very important. You know, especially these days when we all are going for Garawi in the mosque, then, uh, you know, when you are told that please make sisters, please make space because there is, you know, the masajid don't have enough space for women. So you now, now that you've heard it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order, then make sure you make space. And when you're told arise, then arise. So be welcoming. Yeah. The, an, eti an etiquette in, we to, we've been taught an etiquette when you're seated, seated in a gathering, what should you do? You need to make space. You need to, you know, also fill gaps. Okay. We learned about filling gaps, but now we know, you know, we will learn more inshallah. But, you know, we have to be welcoming. Even, you know, I've seen when you go to, Medina and when you go to Mecca, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow you to visit his house in Mecca and Medina. I mean, so you see, I see you know, people are in their groups and they will they will hold the space and they will not allow anyone else to sit. And they'll be lying down, and maybe there is enough space for two people, but they will not give space. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow everyone to recite the Quran and learn the Quran and, and apply the Quran in our in their lives. They don't know because, you know, when you do so, when you follow a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mercy of Allah descends on the person. Okay, so now you're going to make sure that you've heard and you're going to implement it. Okay, inshallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah will raise those who have believed among you and those who were given knowledge by degree and Allah is acquainted of what you do. O oh, you who have believed, when you wish to privately consult the messenger, present before your consultation a charity that is better for you and purer. But if you not, if you find not the means, then indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and merciful. This ayah was later abrogated with the ayah that comes next. So basically, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, everybody wanted some portion of his time. You see how this lady she comes and she is addressing about her. Uh, uh, about uh, her situation to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Understand that he's the head of the state. And, you know, everybody wants to hold conversations and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has other important tasks to do. He has a family to look after. So then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed this ayah that if you want to, then, you know, give charity before you come in, uh, consult the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was the first one, he was so happy, he was the first one who acted upon this ayah and he was very proud about this because he had a particular issue to discuss. So he gave sadaqah 
first and then you know he came to the prophet sallallahu to discuss um the matter you see the thing is you know when something is free everybody wants to avail it but when you know money is being charged and you you see that the numbers start dropping so you know uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the next ayah, have you feared to present before your consultation charities? Meaning, you know, the Sahaba got, you know, they got scared. They were hesitant because they thought, you know, maybe we're not allowed to go and speak to the Prophet وسلم, anymore. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, this is just a sadaqah, you know. Then when you do not, when you do not, and Allah has forgiven you, then at least establish prayer and give zakah and obey Allah and his messenger. So, you know, this ayah abrogated the ayah above. And Allah is acquainted with what you do. Have you not considered those who make allies with, with um, allies of a people with whom Allah has become angry? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about the hypocrites, you know, befriending the Yehud, and, you know, uh, uh, because they were like-minded people. They are neither of you nor of them. And they swear to untruth while they know they are lying. Allah has prepared for them a severe punishment. Indeed, it was evil that they were doing. They took their false oaths as cover, so they averted people from the way of Allah, and for them is a humiliating punishment. Never will their wealth or their children avail them against Allah at all. Those are the companions of the fire and they will abide by therein eternally. So these are, this is about the hypocrites. On the day Allah will resurrect them all and they will swear to him as they swear to you and they think they are standing on something and questionably it is they who are the liars. You see, um, what are we being told here? Lying is the biggest sign of hypocrisy. And the person who lies in dunya will try and lie on the day of judgment as well. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from lying. And shaitan has overcome them and made them forget the remembrance of Allah. Those are the party of shaitan, unquestionably the party of shaitan. They will be the losers, meaning the ones who lie are not going to succeed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And, and who are they? What are their qualities? They forget the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to ask ourselves, are there times that we also forget the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, then, you know, we have to be careful about that. And, and because we forget the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaitan overtakes. Yeah? And then people sin. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect. Indeed, the ones who oppose Allah and his messenger, those will be amongst the most humbled, uh, meaning humiliated and disgraced. How and why? Why will we, you know, because what was the reason? They opposed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command and they opposed the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah has written, I will surely overcome um, I and my messengers. Indeed, Allah is powerful and exalted in might. So we know from the ayah that who is going to win? Allah and his messenger, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will not find a people who believe in Allah in the last day having affection for those who oppose Allah and his messenger, even if it were their fathers and or their sons or their brothers or their kindred. And those who he has decreed within their hearts, faith and supported them with spirit from them, he will admit them into gardens beneath which rivers flow, wherein they will abide by eternally. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with him. Those are the party of Allah and questionably the party of Allah, they are the successful. Allah inna hizballahi humul muflihun. So what does the party of Allah do? What do we know the qualities of the party of the people who belong to the party of Allah? Those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. And they will, you know, and they will love those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. And if they will not, you know, they will not have any affection. And uh, for those, you know, who oppose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, even if they are their blood fathers and their, and their sons or their blood brothers or their relatives, if they are, if these people are opposing Allah and his messenger, you know, they will not hold any love for them. Instead, they will love someone who loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. And the party of shaitan, they forget anything to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the party of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Now we're going to begin Suratul Hashr. Suratul Hashr means the gathering. Uh, and uh, the theme of the surah is Allah's ability to honor the believers and humiliate the disbelievers. And the surah begins and ends with Allah Al-Aziz and Al-Hakim, and the mighty and all wise. And it show, this shows the, the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his wisdom. You see, it begins with Sabaha. Um, I'm going to recite it first. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Sabaha lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ab wa huwa al-aziz al-hakim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins with Sabaha, meaning whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth exalts Allah and he's exalted in might and the wise. Meaning this surah is also in the group of surahs which are musabbihat, it begins with sabbaha. And, and you know, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said some words that are repeated are such that one who says them is never deprived. Yeah, what are the words? Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. The one who says these words is never, then he's never deprived. So you see how many times should we be saying it? 100 times. So this is the hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. Uh, so now this is an action plan. You are going to write for yourself that uh, Allah will fill us with contentment. If we recite this, if we make this a part of our um, uh, remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So I'm going to write that as an action plan as well. So, you know, that, that's going to be an action plan for all of us, inshallah. We'll make it a habit that we do it in Ramadan and inshallah carry it forward. It is he who expelled the ones who disbelieved among the people of scripture from their homes at the first gathering. You did not think they would leave and they thought that their fortresses would protect them from Allah. But the decree of Allah came upon them from where they had not ex expected and he caused terror into their hearts. So they destroyed their houses by their own hands and the hands of the believers. So take warning, O people of vision. So you see, we you know we know that Nabi, before Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to Medina, uh, you know there were three tribes of Jewish Jewish tribes were there. The names were uh, Banu Nadir, Banu Qainqa, and Banu Quraiva. Uh, and you know these, and one particular tribe which was Banu Nadir, they had a treaty with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and with the Muslims that you know they are going to side in any occasion in any conflict uh, they are going to side with the muslims and they're not going to be uh, treacherous and uh, you know also a part of the treaty was you know if someone had committed an accident accidental murder so the blood money is going to be shared by everybody so as usual you know these people they of course they did not abide by the contract and on the on the contrary, they tried to kill Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, and, you know when when he went to ask, you know there was there was a collection of blood money, and um, the Muslims had to pay. So you know they decided that they are going to um, kill Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So now what happened is, um, you know they were taken into, uh, they were surrounded, and um, the. Banu Nadir were surrounded, of course, because, you know, when you're going to attack the Prophet, they're going to reply, aren't they? They're going to retaliate. So they had built fortresses for themselves. And so they, uh, you know, they locked themselves in the fortresses. But, you know, in the end, they had to give in. So when, and, and they were ultimately expelled from the city. So, you know, when they were going, they, they even took the window frames and the door frames of their houses. They emptied, they destroyed their own houses and they, um, you know, they took everything. So there's a lesson for us in this. You know, these people had so many blessings. They had been living there for years. And, um, but they were ungrateful. You know, they were using the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, but what did they do? They went back on their word. And, you know, also they tried to kill the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, you know, just the fact that they were living in fortresses, but how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humiliated them and destroyed their houses, they, they would have never thought that they would have to leave those fortresses of theirs. So you see, we learn that, you know, uh, when anybody opposes the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, you know, they are going to, for sure, they are going to 
suffer huge consequences. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and if it, it was, if not that Allah had decreed for them evacuation, he would have punished them in this world and for them in the hereafter is the punishment of the fire. So, you know, it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will that they will be exiled. And later, you know, Alhamdulillah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conquered um, uh, Khaybar after, you know, inshallah, in Sira you will learn this. And this is, and that is because they oppose Allah and his messenger and whoever opposes Allah, then indeed Allah is severe in penalty. And wh whatever you have cut down of their palm trees or left standing on their trunks, it was by the permission of Allah. And so he would, uh, he would dis disgrace the defiantly and disobedient, you know, in ayah number five, if you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned مَا قَطْعَتُمْ مِنْ لِينَةٍ Lina is, Lina basically means, you know, fresh, uh, healthy date palm tree. So it's something, you know, full of dates at that time, um, a date palm tree. So maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you know, during the siege, what happened is that these people, they had orchards of um, uh, these trees, of date palm trees. Um, on the side of the fortresses. So the, the believers had to cut down the trees uh, so that, you know, their hearts would be weakened because, you know, uh, you know, these trees take hundreds and hundreds of years to to grow. So, you know, that is what, you know, to weaken their hearts. Basically, the idea was that to weaken their hearts. So, and, and, that, and that is what we see that they surrendered. But, you know, they made a lot of noise and they said, look, these Muslims, they cut down palm trees, date palm trees and all this. So, you know, the reply was, you know, Muslims were cutting down trees, but what were you doing? You were killing, you were planning to kill the messenger, kill the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't find that as a problem, but you find cutting a tree a problem. Subhanallah. And you see how people are going, you know, these just, you know, related to this day and age how they are making sound and they are killing human beings and they have least care about it and they will complain about the most trivialist things. So people haven't changed. Ayah 6, and what Allah restored of the... So basically in Ayah 5, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is consoling the believers that don't, don't worry, if you've cut down the trees, it was with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and the idea was to disgrace those people. Uh, so Allah is defending the Muslims there. And what Allah restored of the property to his messenger from them did so do not so did not spur for it in an expedition any horses or camels, but Allah gives his messengers power power over whom he wills, and Allah is over all things competent. So you see this type of game when there is, there is a word called war booty. Okay, that is the spoils of the war. Uh, which is al which is allowed to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wasn't allowed before. That is when you know people confront and there is a battle taking place. Then in in that case when the uh, when enemy is defeated they leave their stuff there and they run for their life. That is called war booty. Here what happened? There was no confrontation. They surrendered. So this is called fay. Okay, this type of gain is called fay, and the the rule is going to be different to that of the war booty. So, and uh, Ayah 7, and what Allah restored to his messenger from the people of the towns, it is for Allah and for the messenger and for his near relatives and orphans and the stranded traveler, so that it will not be a perpetual, it will not be a perpetual distribution among the rich, uh, uh, among the rich from among you and whatever the messenger has given you, uh, take it and what he has forbidden and refrain from it and fear Allah, indeed Allah is severe in penalty. So you see war booty, which is ghanima in Arabic, would be distributed among those who took part in the battle. So the large portion would be given to them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, cares about everyone. So the ones who were weak, the ones who were not able to take part in the battle, what is going to happen to them? So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this, uh, this gain, which is called fay, the ghanima is when you are going to do the, get the war beauty when you war booty when you're going to confront. But here you're not confronting someone surrendered and left all their belongings. Then this is called fay. It's not going to it's not going to go to the people. You know the one. You know you know the 
it's not going to go to the same people. The whole idea is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the entire community to benefit. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the wealth will be concentrated just in among few people. Okay. And then we, uh, we've been told that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives, we should take it. And what he uh, forbids, then we need to refrain from it. You see, um, Abdullah bin Masoud, who said, uh, Allah curses women who tattoos or gets tattooed and one who plucks eyebrows and gets it done and gets gap between teeth and thereby changing the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when, you know, there was a woman, um, when uh, Abdullah bin Masood, he um, told this hadith, narrated this hadith. So, um, you know, this there was a woman, she came to him and she says, you know, what are you saying? I have read the Quran cover to cover. I don't find this, um, I don't find this restriction that I shouldn't be doing what you're asking, you know, eyebrows or, you know, space between the teeth or tattoos. So then Abdullah bin Masoud he read this ayah and he said, What does this ayah say? And whatever the messenger has given you, take it and what he has forbidden. Then so based on that, you know, this is a command of Allah, and this is the hadith. He said, I'm telling you this hadith is an authentic hadith that Allah curses the woman. So immediately we need when we hear this hadith, we need to refrain from whatever Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us in the in in, um, in his ahadith, in his sunnah, it's been said when we stop. Uh, so everybody understood the difference between um, Fay and uh, Ghanima? Can you all hear me, sisters? Yes, okay, alhamdulillah. Understood? What is the difference between? Okay, alhamdulillah. Let's move forward. For the immigrants, for the poor immigrants who were expelled from their homes and their properties, seeking bounty from Allah and his approval and supporting Allah and his messenger, there's also a share. Those are truthful. Um, so you see, the hypocrites, whom the hypocrites are calling liars, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling them the truthful. And also for those who are settled in Al-Madina and adopted the faith before them, um, and they, they love those who emigrated to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the quality of the people of Medina. They are called Ansar. And the people who migrated from Mecca to Medina, they are called Muhajirun. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising them that these people, they, they love those who emigrated and not find any want in their hearts about of what the emig emigrants were given. Meaning and the people of uh, Medina, the Ansar, are not jealous of you know what um, the Muhajirin are given. But they give them preference over themselves, even though they are in need of it. So this uh, ayah was revealed, I'll read to you um, um, the reason for this revelation. And the ayah that is, and whoever is protected from the stinginess of his soul, it is those who will be successful. This ayah was revealed. The reason for this ayah nine was a couple from the Muhajirun came to Medina and nobody had offered them food. So a man from Ansar asked them to come to his house. When the Ansari came uh, home and asked his wife if there was some food, she said only for the children. So they decided they would give water to the children and put them to bed. And when the guests came, and turned, they turned the lamp off and they pretended to eat and let the guests eat the meal. So they were just making sounds from their mouth. And they turned the, the lamp off so they would not be able to, you know, they, the guests would not be able to see that the husband and wife are not eating. And just so that the guests can eat full. And look, nobody knew this, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciated it and revealed this ayah about them. That these people were needy. You know, what are we going to do? Imagine, imagine if you have no food in the house and you have enough for your children, what are you going to do? You're going to scream and you're going to say, go away. My children come first. There is a reason why these people have been given such high status by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And shuh means the stinginess of the soul. What it means is it is extreme greed and extreme stinginess. You know, they to want something very badly and, you know, and the person doesn't want to give it away. And he does not, that this person does not want to share anything. So you see, uh, sometimes, you know, 
for example, some people hold on to their shoes and bags and you know, outfits, and they don't even allow their siblings to, you know, use them. This is not correct. This is not from Islam. Okay. I understand sometimes young brothers and sisters, they can, you know, they can be a bit careless. And maybe you're someone who looks after your your things very, so you can set the rules, but don't hold very dearly and don't be greedy and don't be stingy because this is not a characteristic liked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, stinginess and faith will never be combined in a Muslim's heart. Okay, so in an iman and, and stinginess, selfishness, can, selfishness cannot come together. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from shuh. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and there is a share for those who came after them, meaning believers who came after the later generations of believers, you know, saying, Rab, and I would like you to underline this and make dua for, you know, for people as well. With this one, Rabbana Filena, Wali Ikhwan, Nina Ladina Sabakuna Bil Iman, Wala Tajal Kirkulubina, Rilla Liladina Amanu Rabbana in Nakara of Rahim. They say, Ola, our Lord, forgive us uh, and our brothers who have preceded us in faith and not put in our hearts any resentment towards those who believed. Our Lord, indeed, you are kind and merciful. You see, so what are we? Um, seeing attitude of a Muslim they are selfless yeah you know they don't have any negative feelings for their brothers so this is something that we need to make dua uh, as well for people who have passed before us have you not considered those who practice hypocrisy saying to their brothers who have disbelieved among the people of scripture if you're expelled we will surely leave with you and we will not obey in regards to anyone ever. If you are fought, we will surely aid you. But Allah testifies that they are liars. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking about Abdullah bin Ubay. He was the greatest hypocrite of the time. So, you know, when they were they were asked to leave and they were exiled. So he went to Banu Nadir and he said, you know, stay here. You don't need to go anywhere. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to be, with, you know, if, uh, you know, uh, he's tried to just, you know, be supportive of them. And, uh, you know, and when it happened, when the matters happened, when things got serious, uh, you know, he did not come to support because before initially it said, you know, I've got you covered. I'm there to support you. But he was not there. He didn't show up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if they are expelled, they will not leave with him, with them. And if they were uh, fought, you will not aid them. And even if they should aid them, they will surely turn their backs. And then in their, thereafter, they will not be aided. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us about fake friends. You know, some people who will say, I'll be there for you. Don't worry. Uh, you know, if, whenever you need me, just call me. And when you really need them, they're not there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from such type of friends. May Allah grant us friends who are sincere and loyal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you believers are more fearful within your hearts than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, within their, You believers are more fearful within their hearts than Allah. Meaning, you are more afraid, um, they are more afraid of you than they are afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is because they are people who do not understand. They will not fight you all except within fortified cities or from behind walls. Their violence among themselves is severe. You think they are together, but their hearts are diverse. That is because they are a people who do not reason. Meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that they are cowards, basically. And on that parent, they are all friends to one another, but in reality, they don't they don't stand one another and subhanallah that is so true even in time in today's time you see that on the face of it that it appears that they are all together but we know the reality alhamdulillah that they are they don't they are not no, they are not anybody's friend they are only looking for their own interest theirs is like the example of those shortly before them they tasted the bad consequences of their affair and they will have a painful punishment the hypocrites are like the shaitan when he says to man disbelief but when he disbelieves, he says, indeed, I am disassociated from you. Indeed, I fear Allah, the Lord of the worlds. So you see, this is shaitan. Shaitan who is going to, uh, you know, when there is a problem, then that moment shaitan says, I don't want anything to do with you. I'm going to tell you a story. Um, just let me find the story. Um, this is an author, Wahhab ibn Wahhab. He narrates from the, from the people of the book. So this is from... Uh, the previous previous to um, uh, Islam.
there was a worshipper from the children of Israel. He was a devoted worshipper. And there were three brothers who had a virgin sister and they had to go to war. So they asked him to look after the sister. So you see that they had no one, you know, these brothers were going, who would be looking after them? No one took responsibility. And they thought that this man, he's a, he is a person of God. He's going to look after. So he refused to keep her. They said, who should we leave our sister unprotected? Who should be, you know, they, they were concerned. After, he, after that, he reluctantly agreed and Shaitan whispered, this is a good deed. And she was kept in a cell and he would, you know, wherever she was, I mean, in her house, she was there. So he would leave food outside her, uh, his door. So, you know, and Shaitan whispered, uh, Shaitan whispered to her, him, if it's, it's not right for the girl to walk to your house, leave it to her door. So firstly, what he used to say, he used to leave the food outside his house and say to the girl, come and collect it. Then Shaitan whispered, no, you know, go and put it in, you know, leave it in front of her house. And then he whispered, leave it inside. Then he whispered, you should say salam. She's by, by herself. Then he said, sit with in her company, which led to zina. So, the, you know, this is, you know, basically the footsteps of Shaitan. I'm sure you all are not surprised. This is what happens, isn't it? Then she became pregnant and had a child. Shaitan whispered, kill the child. He killed, uh, he killed it and then killed the girl as well. So, and, and after this time, brothers came back asking. So he said she was ill and died. So now the, the brothers are content, okay? Because people used to go uh, on, on, on war for months and months. So, and years sometimes. So Shaitan came in their dream. So Shaitan came into each one of their dream and uh, and uh, told that your sister was killed and buried. And, you know, and he showed the Shaitan, showed them the place where the sister was buried. So now, you know, first they thought it is just, you know, a, a nightmare or something. But when all of them had the same dream, so they decided they'd go and check and they found it to be true. So they found the remains of their sister. He was sentenced to death. And on his way to be crucified, Shaitan came uh, as a human uh, and said, it was me who misled you. And now if you bow to me, I will find a way out for you. The man did and he was crucified. Meaning the last attack he did is he made him bow to him. That's it. Then all the worship gone. So what do we learn? Shaitan misguides using religion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Okay, so the outcome, I-17, so the outcome for both of them is that they will be in fire abiding eternally therein. And that is the recompense of the wrongdoers. And we know that, don't we, that bad friends in hell are going to be together. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah 18 says, um, and o, o you who have believed, fear Allah and let every soul look at what it has put forth for tomorrow and fear Allah. Allah, indeed, Allah is acquainted of what you do. And be not like those who forgot Allah, so he made them forget themselves. And they are defiantly disobedient. So a person who does not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, actually what happens, he's actually forgotten himself. Not equal are the companions of the fire and the companions of the paradise. The companion of paradise, they are the attainers of success. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of, of them. Ameen, Ya Rabb. If we had sent down this Quran upon a mountain, you would have seen it humbled and coming apart from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these examples we present to the people that perhaps they would give thought. So you see, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the example of the believer and his death are like the example of a man who has three friends. The first one says, uh, take what you want uh, as you please, meaning you can take whatever you want. The second one says, I'm with you, but when you die, I will leave you. And the third one says, I'm with you or, uh, and will go with you. So the first is his wealth. The second is his family and children. And the third is his deeds. So you see, we need to focus on our deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says in ayah 22, He is Allah other than whom there is no deity. Knower of the unseen and the witness. He is entirely merciful, especially merciful. Now here we will see that over 18 names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are mentioned. Um, let's, uh, uh, let's read them all. Yeah. He is Allah. Other than whom there is no deity. Al-Malik, 
the sovereign, al quddus the pure, as-salam, the perfect, um, al-mu'min, the bestower of faith, muhaymin, the overseer, al-aziz, the exalted in might, al-jabbar, the compeller, al-mutakabbir, the superior, subhanallahi amma yushrikun, exalted is Allah above whatever they associate with him. I wish I had time to explain to you, but inshallah, I plan to do and names of Allah um, some other time, inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us. Uh, all together again together inshallah i will do it uh, he is allah the creator the inventor the fashioner the, to him belong the best names the most beautiful names belong to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, and whatever is in the heavens and the earth is exalting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa huwa al-aziz al-hakim and he is the exalted in might and he is the wise Alhamdulillah, we're going to start with Al-Mumtahina now. Mumtahina is the woman to be examined. Uh, and um, it is, of course, I, like I said to you, all the surahs in this Jews are Madini. The theme is the importance of loyalty to the believers and freedom from shirk. The surah begins and ends with the prohibition of allegiance to the disbelievers as, as the strongest bond of faith is to love and hate for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It begins with, Ya ladina amanu. لا تتخذوا عدوي وعدو وعدوكم أو عدو أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تتخذوا عدوي وعدوكم أولياء تلقون إليهم بالمودة وقد كفروا بما جاءكم من الحق يخرجون الرسول وإياكم أن تؤمنوا بالله ربكم إن كنتم خرجتم جهادا في سبيلي وابتغاء مرضاتي تسرون إليهم بالمودة وأنا أعلم بما أخفيتم وما أعلنتم ومن يفعله منكم فقد ضل سواء السبيل O oh, you who have believed, do not take my enemies and your enemies as allies, extending to them affection while they have disbelieved in what came to you of the truth, have driven you, are driven out the Prophet and yourselves only because you believe in Allah, your Lord. If you have come out for jihad in my cause and seeking means of my to my approval, take them not as friends. You confide to them affection. But I am most knowing of what you have concealed and what you have declared. And whoever does it among you as has certainly strayed from the soundness of the way. You see, we learned about uh, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, right? And what happened is um, that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam found that, you know, the Mushrikeen of Mecca had been treacherous. Uh, you know, they violated the treaty. And, uh, you know, they helped and financed an attack against the allies of the Muslims. And this was, you know, treacherous. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, he demanded the blood money from the Meccans. And also he terminated, uh, you know, their alliances. And um, you know they can you know they were you know the Surah Hudaybiyah the Treaty of Hudaybiyah was to be terminated, but you know the Mushrikeen they refused to comply. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam intended to secretly um, a march towards Mecca and you know take over Mecca without you know uh, being a lot of bloodshed in you know in the holy place of Mecca. And you know um, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not tell many people about this. And uh, he did not inform, you know, the Muslims about what the intention was, except just a few days before. And Nabi, before them leaving to Mecca, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed the Muslims. Then among them was one Sahabi. His name was Hatib bin Balta. And he was someone who participated in, in the Battle of Badr. And you know that all people in, who participated in the Battle of Badr are forgiven. But And so he was from Mecca and he had migrated, but his family was there. And, you know, he was, you know, what he did is he wrote this information that Nabi Sallallahu is coming to attack uh, and, you know, so that he could seek protection from them because his family was still in Mecca. So he didn't mean, he didn't mean betrayal. His intention was not betrayal, but his, but his intention was to protect his family. Uh, so Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala immediately sent Jibreel Alayhi Salaam and told about this letter that is being sent. So there was a woman and, you know, she had placed it in her hair, the letter, and she was taking it. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, 
uh, for, uh, um, you know, Nabi Sallallahu gave him the instruction and Ali Radira Talanhu and other companions, they caught up with that caravan that had the woman in it and took the, uh, took the letter. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is warning the believers here and, you know, and, and telling the Muslims that what should their priorities be, yeah? So in ayah number two, if they gain dominance over you, then you should be uh, to you, then they should be to you as enemies and extend against you their hands and their tongues with evil. And they wish they, that you would believe, disbelieve. Meaning never expect them to help you. They're never going to help you. Never will your relatives or your children benefit you the day of resurrection. He will judge between you and, uh, and Allah of what you do is seeing. Yeah, so, you know, they're being this haba being taught a lesson here. There are already there has already been for you an excellent pattern in Ibrahim uh, and those with him when they said to their people, "Indeed, we are disassociated from you and from whatever you worship other than Allah. We have denied you, and there has appeared between us and you animosity and hatred forever until you will believe in Allah alone. Except for saying for the saying of Ibrahim to his father, I will surely ask forgiveness." Because he had promised his father that I'm going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, for forgiveness. And he wanted guidance for his father, basically. But I have not power to do for you anything against Allah, our Lord. Upon you we have relied, and to you we have returned, and to you is the destination. Underlying this, please, ayah number four. رَبَّنَا عَلَيْكَ تَوَكَّلْنَا وَإِلَيْكَ أَنَبْنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ so, you know, and believers are being now told, look at the example of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And he goes on to make, رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا فِتْنَةً لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَاغْفِرْ لَنَا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Our Lord, make us no, not objects of torment for the disbelievers and forgive us, our Lord. Indeed, it is you who is the exalted in might and wise. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that there has certainly been for you in them an excellent pattern for anyone whose hope is in Allah in the last day and whoever turns away, then indeed Allah is free of need and praiseworthy. So for us, we need to follow the example of Ibrahim alayhi salam and the believers who were asked to do at that time. Perhaps Allah will put between you and those whom you have been enemies among them affection and Allah is competent and Allah is forgiving and merciful. Meaning, don't compromise on your faith and you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change the hearts. Allah does not Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight, uh, uh, who do not fight you because of the religion and do not expel you from their homes, be, uh, from being righteous towards them and acting justly towards them. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. So we've been told that we have to maintain a balance. You know, so you know, for someone who is a non-Muslim and they don't, they you know, they do not oppose you, they don't show hatred to you, then you should not take them as enemies, okay? And we, we need to be just, meaning we need to be good to them. And if, if they are good to you, we need to be good to them back as well. Uh, Allah only forbids you for, uh, for, uh, from those who fight you because of religion and expel you from your homes and aid in your expulsion, forbids that you make allies with them and whoever makes allies with them, then it is those who are the wrongdoers. So you see here, um, we see that there are three categories here. One group is those people who believe. Yeah, these are the people whom we should love uh, for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, regardless of where you know their 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 race, their status, their background. Regardless, we should love them for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Anyone who has iman is worthy of our love and friendship. Then there is another group of people. They you know they are those who disbelieve deliver disbelievers who oppose the Muslims who hate them who openly show hatred and animosity, then at that time, what do you do? And Allah SWT is saying, don't, take, don't, don't be naive, you know, defend yourself, don't be deceived, you know, and don't take them as friends. And then there are th there's a third group of people, you know, they are non-Muslims, but they live in peace with you, you know. So that, that, that's an average person, an average neighbor of yours who is a non-Muslim, what are you going to do? You are going to be. If they are peaceful with you, you are at peace with them. Yeah, and uh, because they have not come in the way of your deen and they have not come and, and try to harm you. So you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion is balanced. Uh, ayah number 10. Oh, you who have believed, when the believing women come to you as immigrants, examine them, meaning um, test their faith. And Allah is most knowing. Uh, 
uh, as to their faith and Allah is uh, and if you know that uh, and if you know them to be believers then do not return them to the disbelievers you see here well you know we've been told that um, at the time of uh, the treaty of Hudaybiyah yeah the the polities of Mecca has set a condition that if anyone emigrates from Mecca to Medina they must be returned back to Mecca uh, so now, uh, and that was man, so any man. So however, woman who did hijrah, you know, she, you, know you, can, you, you can take her in because the treaty said man and did not mention woman. So the, you know, so the believing women, when they, they were protected and they were allowed to come and join in Medina. So now they are being told that, you know, anyone who's believing, we have to tell, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has, has been asked to test them. Um, why? Because they are not lawful wives for them. Meaning, uh, if they are married to husbands who are mushrik, then they are not, you know, a, a mu'mina cannot be married to a mushrik man. The marriage is not valid. Nor are they the lawful husbands for them. So you cannot send those women back. But give the disbelievers what they have spent, meaning the woman has to leave her mahar. Yeah, she cannot keep her mahar. So she's, you know, the marriage is invalid, but, you know, he has paid her mahar, so she needs to return that, even if he's a non Muslim. And there is no blame upon you if you marry them when you have given them their due compensation. Yeah, the, their previous marriage terminated, uh, and then they can be married off and hold not. No, no, hold not to marriage bonds with disbelieving women, but ask for what they have, what you have spent, and let them ask for what they have spent, meaning return the mahar. And that is the judgment of Allah. He judges between you, and Allah is knowing and wise. And if you lost any of your wives to the disbelievers, meaning any woman who goes to the mushrikeen, and you subsequently obtain something, then give those wives. Uh, uh, those wives have gone the equivalent of what they had spent and fear Allah in, in whom you are believers. O Prophet, when believing women come to you, pledging to you that they will not associate anything with Allah, nor will they steal, nor will they commit unlawful sexual intercourse, nor will they kill their children, nor will they bring forth a slander they have invented between their arms and legs, nor will they disobey you in what is right, then accept their pledge and, and ask forgiveness for them of Allah. Meaning, if they fall short in observing deen, what should you do? Then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and merciful. So you see when they are, you know, um, pledging with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi pledge of allegiance, that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never held the hand of a woman. Never. So that was just done verbally. Ayah 13, O you who have believed, do not make allies uh, of people with whom Allah has become angry. They have despaired of the, the and they have despaired of the reward in and hereafter just as believers have despaired of the meeting the inhabitants of the grave meaning they don't believe in akhirah and so you know everything for them is dunya they are focused in dunya and they are trying to develop them you know whatever they have so how can they be loyal to you they are their focus is Dunya, so they're going to compromise religion and they're going to make you compromise your religion. So, you know, do not make allies with them. Now, alhamdulillah, we're going to begin Surah Al-Saf. Saf means the row, the row, the rows of, you know, when we are praying the rows uh, or the rank. And the theme is invitation to being united and together in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the surah begins and ends about supporting the religion. And this is due to the importance of the matter in the life of a Muslim, which, which should not be ne neglected. Again, it begins with sabbaha. It is from uh, musabbihat. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Sabbaha lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ab. Wa huwa al-azizul hakim. Um, whatever is in the heavens and the earth, and uh, on the earth exalts Allah and he's exalted in might at the wise. So, oh, you believe. Uh, why do you say what you do not do? A very, very important, pro profound ayah, ayah here that we need to think of our words and actions. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us, oh, you believe, so that's addressing me and you. Why do you say things that you do not do? Um, you know, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting and there was a lady 
And, you know, she was, um, so the, this child who's grown up, he's narrating his incident. And he is a Sahabi, he was a child. So he, he said that, you know, my mother had something in, my, in her hand and, and she was calling me. So, you know, the Prophet ﷺ asked her, what do you intend to give him? She replied, I intended to give him some dates. So the Prophet ﷺ said, if you, were, if you were not going to give him anything, a lie would be reported against you. You know, so many times when we call the children and we want things, you know, especially little ones. So what do you do? You say, come, I'm going to give you a sweet. Or you just hold your hand in a way that they assume that you are going to give them something to eat or something, you know, to play with. But you're only tricking them. And, and from this hadith, we know that that is going to be written as a lie if, if we don't have anything. And again, that is a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that why do you say what you do not do? So we have to be very careful of our statements. Okay. Uh, you know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, great is hatred in the sight of Allah that you say what you do not do. Ya Allah. Meaning we need to fulfill our promises. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, we will, you know, get the hatred of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, as parents, you know, don't do, don't say things you can't do. You know, just say, you know, just add, yeah, you know, if I can, don't say for sure I'm going to do it. Say if I have the ability, I will be able to do it. I will do it. But don't make it, you know, the children think that 100% you're going to do it. And then you don't do it. That will earn the hatred of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let's find out who does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love. Indeed, Allah loves those who fight in his cause in a row as though they are a single structure joined firmly. Meaning they are joined together like a wall. It is, it is impossible to break them. And this is what, uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and people stand in rows. And in, in the time of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, people used to, you know, when they used to pray, and you do know, I hope you know that, you know, the shoulder to shoulder and feet to feet should be joined. Because if we leave gaps in between, shaitan comes in, in between. So, you know, when the man came to kill um, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, you know, he tried to run. But the Sahaba at the back were standing so tightly that, you know, he, he could not run because they, they did not leave any gaps in between. He was praying behind uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He killed him and then he tried to run. He could not run. And so the rows were so firm, so strong. There was no gap. So what did he uh, do? He knew that he is trapped. So what did he he killed himself? He stabbed himself because he knew he's going to be he's going to be in trouble. So what we learn from this an action point that when we are going to go and pray, then we are inshallah going to form you know stand together and uh, not leave any gaps in between. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions now Musa alayhi salam and mentioned O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Musa said to his people, O my people, why do you harm me while you certainly know I'm the messenger of Allah to you? And when they uh, and when they de deviated, Allah caused their hearts to deviate and Allah does not guide the defiantly disobedient people. So you see, Bani Israel, they would say yes, yes to the command of their messenger. But, you know, on the face of it, they would say, but they did not follow the message. So, you know, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? Allah deviated their hearts because they deviated. So an action point for us that, you know, we need to obey our messenger. We need to follow the sunnah and we need to, uh, you know, for act upon the sunnah as well. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deviate our hearts and may Allah protect us from that. And mentioned when Jesus, the son of Mary, said, O children of Israel, indeed, I'm the messenger of Allah to you, confirming what came before me of the Torah and bringing good tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name is Ahmed. So you see, Ahmed is the name in, in the Bible, in the gospel. And Ahmed and Muhammad mean the same, the one who is praised. And, and and someone who praises a lot, meaning he, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to praise Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala a lot, and he is the one who is praised. But he came when he came to to them with clear evidences. They said this is obvious magic. So although he has a mention in the name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioned with clear evidences, yet they denied him. And who is more unjust than the one who invents about Allah and truth while he is being invited to Islam and Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. You know, another thing very important is, you know, when the children are young, some people, they have the habit of saying to the children, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to put you in the fire and, and 
and all that. Don't 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 tell your children that Allah Subhanahu is going to put you in fire on trivial things. Okay, don't uh, you know? Let them let don't make them you know fear all the time. Let them love Allah Subhanahu wa Taala because they they have not done any major sins that they are going to be sent to the hellfire. Okay, and here it says that um, the Arabic. I'm just going to read the Arabic. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. Woman of the mama. So zulm, what is zulm? Zulm is imbalance. Yeah. The imbalance lies in its corruption. Yeah. That is why every sin a person commits has oppressed himself. And the opposite of zulm is adi, justice. So the sinful person is not just to himself. And if you want our hearts corrected, the correction of the heart lies in Adi, which is fairness and justice. Okay, so it's important. I thought I should share this with you. And they want to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouths, but Allah will perfect his light, um, although the disbelievers dislike it. You know, as much as false propaganda they can do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect, Quran is perfect, and they are not going to be able to do anything to the deen of Islam. It is he who sent the mess his messenger with guidance and the religion to the truth uh, uh, of truth to manifest over all religions, although those who associate others with Allah dislike it. So you see, Walau uh, Kariha uh, is mentioned, this this is mentioned two places in the Quran. It is mentioned here and it is mentioned in Surah Tawbah. Meaning this religion is said is, is going to prevail. No matter what anybody tries, this the religion of Islam is will prevail. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Yuladina Amanu. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you an, an, an a, a great um a business opportunity to say. Okay. We are all being offered a great business opportunity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh, you who have believed, shall I guide you to a transaction that you will be saved from a painful punishment? So we say, Yes, Allah, Ya Rabbi, we want to hear that. Uh, number one, it is believe in Allah and his messenger and strive in the cause of Allah with your wealth and your lives. That is best for you if you should know. He will forgive for you your sins and admit you to gardens beneath which rivers flow and pleasant dwellings in the gardens of perpetual re residence. That is a great attainment. So you see how, what, what are we going to do? We are going to, we are going to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, in his uh, and in and follow the sunnah and strive in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The little bit that we should be doing, I think, is all of you are you praying your 12 sunnahs every single day? Because that is you know guaranteed one house in Jannah made for you if you pray 12 sunnahs every day, two sunnah of fajr, four sunnah before uh, uh, Zuhr, and which, which is to be prayed in twos and twos, and two sunnah after four father Zuhr, and then. Uh, in Maghrib 2, after the 3 fard, and after uh, Isha, the 4 fard of Isha 2 Sunnah, that is equal to 12. And you will obtain another favor that you love. Um, victory from Allah and an imminent uh, conquer, uh, uh, conquest, and give good tidings to the, to the believers. All oh, you who have believed, be the supporters of Allah. And as when Jesus, the son of Mary, said to his disciples, who are my supporters for Allah? The disciples said, we are the supporters of Allah. And a faction of the children of Israel believed and a faction disbelieved. So we supported those who believed against their enemy and they became dominant. So what do we learn? That if we want to be, if we want dominance in dunya, we need to serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, so, you know, with Isa alayhi salam, when he asked for helpers, or 12, only 12 people, um, you know, they agreed. And even among the 12, one of them betrayed. And then and it reduced the number. So, you know, we need to serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, um, you know, I see the times running out, but I'll read you a hadith. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, should I not tell you about a tijara, meaning a business? Uh, he said, the Sahabi said, yes, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, join between two people when there is corruption between them, when there is an argument between them. Meaning when two people have fought together with each other and their relationship has gone really bad. And if you want, if you are going to bring them close, then that is a trade with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Yeah, so, you know, this is an investment. 
you know, it's not that you're losing your time and you're losing your mental energy. It is something a great, a good deed. Um, so, um, you know, we need to try and, and do that. Jumu'ah is the Friday congregation. The theme of this surah is the sign of unity um, and gatherings um, and, ga and gathering the believers. And the surah begins about uh, with sending the, uh, the Prophet وسلم, about sending of the Prophet وسلم, which is out of the favor of Allah. And the surah ends by mentioning that the favors of Allah in the near hereafter are better than those in the world. Again, it begins with yusabbihu. Yusabbihu, sabbaha, all come under the category of musabbihat. Musabbihat, yusabbihu lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ad, al-malik al-qudus, al-aziz al-hakim. Whatever is in the heavens and the earth, whatever is on the earth is exalting Allah, the sovereign, the pure, the exalted in might, the wise. It is he who has sent among the uh, among a and the unlettered a messenger from um, from themselves reciting to them in his verses and purifying them and teaching them the book and wisdom, although they were before in clear error. So what is the Prophet what did? He taught four things. Number one, he recited to them the book of Allah the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, he purified. So purification is of two types, purification of the heart from all the ill feelings and the negativity and purification by giving zakah. Then he taught them the book and then the wisdom is the sunnah. The sunnah of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is called the wisdom. So this was the purpose that uh, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala say, says that, um, you know, uh, although, you know, before that, the people were in clear error. So, you know, what should we do? An action point for us that, you know, we should be grateful um, for the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to study the Quran. Because before that, what were we? We didn't know anything. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to implement every bit of what we have studied in the Quran. I mean, Ya Rabb. Wa akharina and to the others of them who have not joined yet, and he is exalted in might and wise, meaning the later generations. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa was not just sent to those people, but he is sent to generations after. And that is the bounty of Allah, which he gives to whom he wills. And Allah is the possessor of great bounty. So at this moment, we make dua. Allahumma inni as'aluka min fadlik. Allahumma inni as'aluka min fadlik. Allahumma inni as'aluka min fadlik. So what is fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is first the Quran. The, the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Quran. Number two, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number three is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a teacher. So these are the examples. I number five, the examples of those who are, were interested with the Torah and then did not take it on uh, uh, is like that of a donkey who carries volumes of books. So the people who were giving the, the Torah, what happened? They, they read it, but they did not implement it. So what did it become? It just became a burden to them. Just like how a donkey carries the book. You know, does the donkey benefit from it? No. So, you know, any one of us now, for us, anyone who is given the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but does not respect the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does not implement it, then, you know, may Allah protect us that we are being compared to a donkey. Uh, and wretched is this example of the people who deny the signs of Allah. And Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. So what do we learn? That zulm uh, against the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that, you know, you don't, you, you know, you don't implement it. You don't read it. You don't understand it. So may Allah allow us to read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and implement it in our lives. I mean, uh, and say who, say who, Say, O oh, you who are Jews, if you claim that you are allies of Allah, excluding the other people, then wish for death if you should be truth, uh, truthful. But they will not wish for it ever because of what their hands have put forth. And Allah is knowing of the wrongdoers. Say, indeed, the death from which you flee, indeed, it will meet you. Then you will be returned to the knower of the unseen and the witnessed. And he will inform you about what you used to do. O oh, you who have believed, when the adhan is called for the prayer on the day of Jumu'ah, Friday, then proceed to the remembrance and leave trade. And this is for men only, not women. 
But the important thing is with Darul Bay. So you see that in, in the West, what I see is, you know, some people, and when Allah subhanahu is saying, just leave the trade, stop. Why would you hire some people and then, you know, you're meant to stop. You are not fulfilling the command of Allah subhanahu If you have a shop and it's time for prayer, that, you know, this, you know, a business that you are running, it's a man running the business. And what he does is he gets someone else to, you know, that, that moment, you know, your business still functioning. And that is not correct. That is not correct. Okay. So what we are being told, just leave everything and come to remember Allah subhanahu That is better for you only if you know. And we know from uh, the sunnahs of the Friday, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever takes a bath on Friday and bathes completely, meaning properly and goes early and walks and does not ride to the mosque, he walks to the masjid, sits close to the imam, listens to him and does not engage in idle talk, then every step he takes will be will have the record of one year's fasting and praying at night. Subhanallah. And one another etiquette is if you, you know, ladies happen to go for Jumu'ah, then make sure that you are not talking whilst the khutbah is happening. It's not from the etiquette. Um, okay. So, and the rest of the hadith you know already. And when the prayer has been concluded, disperse within the land and seek from the bounty of Allah and remember Allah when they, when, that you may succeed. So how is what is a success uh, um, achievement criteria that you pray and after after you pray you seek the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when they saw a transaction or diversion of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they rushed to it and left you standing say what is uh, what is with Allah is better than the diversion and, and than a transaction and Allah is the best of the provider so there was an incident that happened and there was an incident that happened. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was giving the khutbah of uh, Jumu'ah. And the, the Sahaba was sitting and, and listening. And what happened is that, uh, you know, a caravan happened to pass by in Medina. And, and they had brought food. Uh, and, you know, these people, uh, uh, they, were, they did not have, they had shortage of food. There was famine happening at the time. So, you know, when the caravan came, it made a lot of noise and, you know, people were hungry. So they started leaving. So much so that there were only 12 people left in the masjid. Yeah. And um, 12 men and seven uh, women left in the masjid. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then revealed this ayah uh, to say that, you know, you should not, you, you know, when you're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should be listening. He was teaching you the khutbah. So, you know, the, the sahaba are being taught some manners. Okay. So, alhamdulillah, we've completed um, Surah Al-Jumu'ah. Now we begin Surah Taghabun. Ta, uh, uh, surah Taghabun. Uh, surah, I, I beg your pardon. Is it Surah Munafiqun? Am I mistaken? Okay, yes, I am. Surah Munafiqun, not Taghabun. Yes, um, Taghabun is uh, the Surah Munafiqun is the hypocrites. Um, the theme is characteristics of the hypocrites and warning against them. The surah begins and ends with the verses to tell us um, uh, Allah knows about us. So the believers will be cautious of their intentions and actions and the hypocrites know that Allah knows what they conceal and what they reveal. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ida jaaka al munafiqun qalu nashhadu innaka la rasulullah wallahu ya'lamu innaka la rasuluh wallahu yashhadu inna al munafiqin la kadhibun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that when the hypocrites come to you, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they say, we testify that you are the messenger of Allah and Allah knows that you are the messenger, meaning that their testimony is not needed and Allah testifies that the hypocrites are liars. You know, you see, uh, hypocrites have the habit of swearing, isn't it? They used to swear and assure Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, you know, they are faithful and they are, uh, you know, uh, uh, they would swear about their faith. So uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is telling that, you know, their, their testimony is not acceptable and near Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, two things will, be never, uh, will never be together in a hypocrite, good manners and understanding in religion. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Uh, Hudayfa bin Yaman was a Sahabi. And, you know, he knew uh, the list of all the hypocrites. And uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa had shared with him the, hadith, the, the names of the people. <clears throat> yeah. Um, he said, 
the hypocrites of today, um, and this is he's mentioning after Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has passed. The hypocrites of today are worse than those of the lifetime in the lifetime of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because in those days they used to do evil deeds secretly, but today they do deeds such deeds openly. May Allah protect us. Uh, that is the case even in our time now. They have taken their oaths as a cover, so they averted people from the way of Allah. So meaning these people, they have no interest in deen. And so they are so-called Muslims, but what they do is they do harm to Islam. Indeed, it was evil that they are doing. And they, that is because they believed and then they be disbelieved. So their hearts were sealed over and they do not understand. When you see them, their forms please you, meaning their physical appearance seems so impressive that, you know, their outward, you know, uh, uh, their body, their outward appearance and the way they talk. It like, pleases a person. And if they speak, you listen to their speech, meaning they're so articulate, they're so convincing when they, they speak, they are as if uh, they are as if they were pieces of wood propped up, meaning they have they have no faith in them. They are empty of faith. They think that every shout is against them, meaning you know they are guilty uh, in, inside their hearts, they are guilty. They are the enemy, so beware of them. May Allah destroy them. How are they deluded? And when it is said to them, come, messenger of Allah will ask for forgiveness for you, they turn their heads aside and you see them evading while they are arrogant, meaning they don't like coming to the Prophet ﷺ. It is all the same for them, whether you ask forgiveness for them or you do not ask forgiveness for them. Allah will never forgive them. Indeed, Allah does not guide the defiantly disobedient uh, uh, people and you know Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam every day himself would ask forgiveness for himself minimum hundred times so and you know if, he, if he, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would make dua for them Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is saying that it's not going to benefit them they are the ones who say do not spend on those who are with the messenger of Allah until they disband and to Allah belongs the depositories of the heavens and the earth but hypocrites do not understand they say if we return to Al Madina the more honored will surely expel they're from the most humble. Then this was Ab Abdullah bin Ubay. When they were returning from Ghazwa, this is, this is what he said. Uh, and to Allah belongs all the honor and to his messenger and to the dis and to the believers, but the hypocrites do not know. O oh, you who have believed, let not your wealth and your children divert you from the remembrance of Allah. And whoever does that, does that, then they are the low, then those are the losers. So highlight this. That, you know, our children and our quest for wealth should not, you know, divert us from the Akhirah. Because parents, you know, you're doing everything to, to, you know, to give your child comfort and doing so, you're not giving time to the deen, you're not learning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, you know, uh, in, that is important that we don't forget the greater purpose. So we are told that don't let your wealth and children distract you from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is an important message. And spend in the way of Allah from what we have provided you before death approaches one of you. And he says, my Lord, if only you could delay me for a brief term so I would give charity and be among the righteous. So you see, a person... You know, when on the deathbed, they don't they don't want to say, Ya Allah, allow me to go and pray to Raqqa. Because when they will see the benefit of charity, they would want to give, be given an opportunity to just come and give sadqa one time so they can be saved. But never will Allah delay a soul when its time has come and Allah is acquainted with that, with what you do. So, you know, what are we going to do? That, you know, we are going to try and give Charity as much as we can in this lifetime of ours. Surah al -Taghabun. It is Taghabun means mutual loss and gain. And the theme of the surah is, you know, the great loss of the disbelievers on the day of judgment. The surah begins and ends about the knowledge of Allah. And this is because Allah knows the people of paradise and the people of hell from the beginning. And he knows whom from them is in a loss. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. يسبح لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. Now again, it begins with يسبح. So it, you know, uh, we have to get in the habit of saying Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wa La Ilaha Illallah, Allahu Akbar. 
So Allah SWT is telling us, whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth is exalting Allah. So to him belongs the dominion and to him belongs all the praise and he's over all things competent. It is he who created you and among you is a disbeliever and among you is a believer and Allah of what you do is seen. Meaning Allah is telling us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching our deeds and he created the heavens and earth in truth and formed you and perfected your forms. Meaning, what do we know from this ayah? That every person is beautiful in their own way. It is humans. We have made standards of beauty and ugliness. But Allah is saying that I created you perfect. And to him is the final destination. He knows what is within the heavens and earth. And he knows what you conceal and what you declare. And Allah is knowing what is within the hearts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a creator. He knows everything. Has there not come to you the news of those who disbelieved before? They tasted the bad consequence of their affair and they will have a painful punishment. That is because their messengers used to come to them with clear evidences. But they said, shall humans, human beings guide us and disbelieved and turned away. And Allah dispensed with them. Yeah, when, when they did not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah did not care about them. Allah is free of need and praiseworthy. Those who believe have claimed that they will never be resurrected. Say, yes, by my Lord, you will surely be resurrected. And then you will surely be informed of what you did. And that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is easy. So believe in Allah and his messenger and the light in which we have sent down. And what is this light? The Quran. And Allah is acquainted with what you do. The day he will assemble you for the day of assembly. So Yawmut Tagabun is another name for the day of judgment. Okay. That's a name for uh, Yawmut Tagabun. It's in ayah number nine. Okay. And that is a day of deprivation. Meaning it is a day of mutual gain and loss. Some will lose, others will gain. And on that day, there will be complete justice. And whoever believes in Allah and does righteousness, he will remove from him his misdeeds and admit him into gardens beneath which rivers flow and there in, wherein they will abide forever. That is a great attainment. But the ones who disbelieved and denied our verses, those are the companions of the fire abiding eternally therein and wretched is the destination. No disaster strikes except by the permission of Allah. So, you know, any problem happening in our life, remember, that that's happening with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there's a wisdom that we don't understand and whoever believes in Allah he will guide his heart so we need to take an action point from here that don't react in situations okay when you don't react and you have contentment and you have you know have firm resolve that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going there's good going to come out Allah will give you contentment Ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, this is the one who, when some trials afflict him, he remains pleased with Allah, he remains satisfied and content with Allah's decree, and he understands that it is from Allah, meaning there is something good in it. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this ayah, he, he mentioned that this is ayahs about that person. And Allah is knowing of all things. And obey Allah and obey the messenger. But if you turn away, then, our, upon, then upon our messenger is only the duty of clear notification. And uh, Allah, is, there is no deity except him. And upon Allah, let the believers rely. O oh, you who have believed indeed among your wives. Now, inna min azwajikum, zawj, meaning here it can be spouse. So when a woman is reading, that's for her husband and the husband is reading us for her, his wife. Okay. Among your spouses and your children are enemies. So beware of them. Meaning what they may hinder you in praying. Yeah. So they may be, they may stop you in attaining Jannah. So what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying? Fahdharuhum, underline, you know, you know, and if you pardon and overlook and forgive, then indeed Allah is forgiving. Okay, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to understand the Quran. Um, in, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah 15, your wealth and your children are but a trial and Allah has with him a great reward. So um, the great reward and is by great effort. And so fear Allah as much as you are able to uh, um, and listen and obey and spend in the way of Allah. This is better for yourselves and whoever is protected from the stinginess of his soul. It is those who will uh, be successful 
I'm going to tell you a story here about, you know, inima amwalukum wa awladukum fitna. Okay, meaning your wealth and your children are trial. You know, your family is a trial. Uh, you know, there was a lady, you know, whose husband was not very pleased with her. And no matter how hard she tried, uh, he never praised her. He never, you know, gave her the attention she was looking for. And, you know, she would spend days thinking of, you know, ways how she could get his attention. And, uh, you know, she wanted to spend time with him. And, you know, he was not interested. So, you know, she decided she went to a scholar to discuss the situation. She told him that, you know, I have come to the point, you know, even in Salah, I'm thinking about him and I'm making dua and that, that he starts caring for me. And, you know, I want him to spend time with me. So all, even during Salah, that's all I'm thinking. So the scholar said that, you know, you know, surely what she's doing is wrong because, you know, you're focusing too much on this, so much so that you're not even performing your ibadah properly. And this is the problem. So, uh, you know, it is it has become a test for you and, and it's distracting you from the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know what he said? He said to her, you know, you know, try and pray with complete koshua. So focus in your prayer and don't think of him, in, 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 you know, when you're praying. Just focus to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a few months passed and she came back to the, to the scholar and told him, I don't do the efforts I used to do to get his attention. I just pray properly to please Allah. And my husband is so pleased with me. So what happened? You know, now you, you see what has happened? You know, when she was running up after it, becoming a problem, he was running away. But when she focused on ibadah, Allah put in the heart of the husband to care, care about her more. So this is something we should do as well. You know, we are, we are supposed to do what we are supposed to do. And things will fall into place. We don't have to run after people. Please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the creation will be happy with you. You see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fear Allah as much as you are able to and obey and listen and obey and spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, and you know, it's Ramadan time, try and donate in different projects and try and donate at night as well. Okay, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you loan Allah a goodly loan, he will multiply it for you and forgive you. And Allah is most appreciative and, and forbearing. So if we want forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to invest, we need to give qardun hasana, qardun hasana to knower of the unseen and the witnessed and exalt, the exalted in might, the wise. Now we're going to start Surat al-Tahreem. Uh, no, Surat al-Talaq. I don't know. I'm rushing. Surat al-Talaq. Uh, talaq means the divorce. And it was this surah was revealed after the surah, after surah Baqarah. Where you know the the divorce commands were uh, revealed, and then soon after that, and um, this surah was revealed. And the theme of the surah is having the taqwa of Allah is the reason for protecting the family and society, uh, and the ummah. So let's begin. The surah begins and ends with the command to have taqwa, and this is because if the slave has taqwa, it will become easier for them to fulfill their duties. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Oh, Prophet, when you when you Muslims divorce uh, uh, women, divorce them from the for the commencement of their meeting period, meaning uh, divorce should be given at a time, um, you know, give them divorce at a time in the pu period of purity. So what is the period of purity? That, you know, time when they did not have any intim intimacy with them. Uh, so they can actually begin their idda then. Uh, then. And keep count of the waiting period, meaning waiting period means the idda. And fear Allah, your Lord, do not turn them out of their husband's houses, meaning don't kick them out. After the first and the second divorce, not meant to kick the woman out. And for divorce, the waiting period is three menstrual cycles. And in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, nor should they leave themselves, nor should the woman leave themselves. Yeah, they need to stay in their husband's house. Yeah, do not leave the husband's house in rage unless they are committing clear immorality and those are the limits set by Allah and whoever transgresses the limits of Allah has certainly wronged himself. 
you know not perhaps allah will bring about the uh, uh, after that a different matter meaning be ho be hopeful and careful about the uh, of the waiting period you see how is in islam divorce is not easy you know you, the man has to be careful she you know he, she has to be in the period of purity he should not have you know ha been intimate with her and then the divorce starts the first divorce and the second divorce three menstrual cycles have to pass and then in that time it said that the woman should stay in the house and you know and, and decorate herself so you know he has a change of heart and when they have nearly fulfilled their term then either return them according to acceptable terms or part with them according to acceptable terms and bring to witness uh, just uh, two just men from among you and uh, establish the testimony for acceptance of Allah. And then that is instructed to whoever should believe in Allah and the last day and whoever fears Allah, Allah will make a way out for them, for him. Underline this woman. So you see, um, you know, people, when it comes to talaq, they forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The forget what is uh, what has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, what are the, the the rules and regulations. People focus so much upon um, you know uh, the the wedding planner and this and that, but little did do they know about divorce and the intricacies of divorce and what are and how should a person be divorcing? Should they be doing three, four, or five, six times the, the divorce, divorce, divorce? No, that is not that is not how the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that divorce is difficult, it is painful. Uh, but the one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not follow his emotions but observes the limits set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, and especially at the time that when there is a dispute. And when when you follow the limits set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will guide the person, whether it is a man. Where, whether it is a woman and all their families, they have to observe the taqwa. Yeah. So, uh, you know, anybody uh, who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find a way for them. And Allah will provide for him from where he does not even expect. Meaning whoever has taqwa, even if it is the husband or it's the wife, Allah will make a way out of them. And any difficulty that they are in, they will come out of it. And, 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 you know, people think, I'm going to get divorced. What's going to happen? Who's going to earn for me? Allah is telling you, uh, you will get, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, Allah will provide for you from places you cannot expect. But the, the thing is, whoever relies upon Allah, then he is sufficient for him. Indeed, Allah will accomplish his purpose. And Allah has already set for everything a, dec a decreed extent. And those who no longer expect menstruation among your women, if you doubt, then your period of idda is three lunar months, meaning those people, those women who don't have menstruation, you know, they passed their menopausal for some reason, they are not, they're not menstruating anymore, then that is three lunar months, not the solar months, but lunar months. And also for the ones who have not menstruated, meaning people, you know, the, the you know, some people they get nikah done before. Then, uh, well, they don't have it that they got done before. Anyway, so for those who have uh, menstruated and for those who are pregnant, their term is until they give birth. So the ones who are who don't have mens menstruation, then that is three lunar months. And the ones who are pregnant, so they are their idda is going to finish the time they give birth. So if he she's divorced and and the third divorce happens and and she's one month pregnant, her idda is going to be the, the until she delivers the baby. And if she, and she gets divorced and after, uh, you know, a week she gives birth or after the second day she gives birth, then her idda is completed as soon as she has um, given birth. So, you know, the topic is divorce. But what are we being told? Taqwa. Yeah, because we are not allowed to take other people's rights. We have to observe taqwa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, min amrihi yusra. Whoever fears Allah, Allah will make matters easy for them. That is the command of Allah in which he has sent down to you. And whoever fears Allah, he will remove for him his misdeeds. Allah will make him make uh, will make will great for him his reward. Lodge them uh, uh, where you dwell out of your means and do not harm them in, in order to oppress them. So you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling uh, us that, you know, telling the man, don't harass the woman, uh, you know. And, you know, 
she, you know, you cannot, uh, the, the woman should be placed in, in the, uh, where you dwell out of your means, meaning according to your means. And if they should, uh, if they should be pregnant then spend on them until they give birth. And if they breastfeed for you, then you will give their payment. Meaning if the person according to their, uh, their status has to provide for the you know the child that is going to be born and when the child is going to be breastfed is the lady has to be provided for and confer among yourselves in the acceptable way but if you are in discord then there there may breastfeed for the father uh, another woman meaning after the divorce then remember the woman the mother she has the right to nurse her child and if she's nursing the child the father of the child even if they are no longer married he has to compensate for her yeah um, you know, so, you know, the, that he is financially responsible. Okay. So this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares for the woman and, and you know, the, the, and the responsibilities on the man. Let a man of wealth spend from his wealth and he whose provision is restricted, let him spend from what Allah has given him. Allah does not charge a soul except according to what he has given him. Allah will bring about hardship ease. And so what is it? That is with difficulty. And then there is ease after difficulty also. Yeah. No difficulty is permanent and absolute. Okay. And everyone is going to spend according to what they are. So if someone is earning thousands of pounds, for example, they can't just get away by giving, you know, a uh, hundred pounds. Everyone according to their status. And how many a city was insolent towards the command of its Lord and his messengers. So we took a severe account and punished it with a terrible punishment. And it tasted the bad consequence of its affair. And the outcome of its affair was loss. Allah has prepared for them a severe punishment. So fear Allah, O you of understanding who have believed. Allah has sent down to you the Quran, meaning Quran has been sent down. It is a message. It is an instruction we need to follow if we neglect it. <clears throat> Then we need to see what happened to the people of the past. Allah has sent down a messenger, um, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, reciting to you distinct verses of Allah that He may bring out those who believe and do righteous deeds from the darkness into light. And whoever believes in Allah and does righteousness, He will admit him to gardens beneath which rivers flow to abide therein, and Allah will have perfected for him a provision. It is Allah who has created seven heavens and of earth like of the like of them. Meaning from here underlined, we know that there are seven heavens and seven earths. His command descends among them. So you know, you may know that Allah is over all things competent and that Allah has encompassed all things in knowledge. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Surah Al-Tahreem. Uh, Tahreem means the prohibition. Uh, and the theme is instruction to raise Muslim uh, ha instruction to raise a Muslim household. And the, the surah begins and ends with the different examples of women in history. Yeah, this is to show the, the important role of women in the family, her impact in the society and in the nation. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya ayyuhan nabiyu lima tuharrima ma ahallallahu lak. Tabtaghi marbata azwajik. Wallahu ghafuru rahim. Oh, oh, you Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, why do you, why do, why do you prohibit yourself from um, what Allah has made lawful for you, seeking the approval of your wives and Allah is forgiving and merciful? This is an indication here that, uh, you know, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam swore never to drink the honey water. You know, because, you know, some wives had plotted and told him that, you know, yeah, that honey, when you drink this honey, it leaves a bad smell uh, on you. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not like bad smell. So, you know, and so the Prophet وسلم, for the purpose of pleasing his wives, he swore an oath that he would never drink that honey again. He would leave it. So he, you know, he did not declare it unlawful, but he just wanted his wives to be ha happy. So you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rectifying even his messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah has ordained for you Muslims the dissolution of your oaths and Allah is your protector and he is knowing and wise. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is told over here to break your oath and then you have to give um, in, in the, the penalty for it. And, and what is it? That either fast three days, if it's not possible, then feed uh, uh, you know, 10 people or clothe 10 people. So that, that is the option. And remember when the Prophet confided to one of his wives a statement, 
meaning that he told a secret to one of the wives and he said, let it be a secret. And when she informed another of it, Allah informed him about it. So, you know, the wife then told the other, the other wife as well. So the Prophet had made known a part of it and ignored her. So, you know, Nabi Sallallahu had told her something and did not tell her the detail. And when he informed her about it, uh, she said, who told you this? He said, I was informed by the knowing, uh, the acquainted, meaning Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala told Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, you know, she has shared the secret. If you two wives repent to Allah, it is best um, for your hearts and um, have deviated. Now you see how the wives of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is correcting the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. You know, and this was an incident between Aisha radiallahu anha and Hafsa radiallahu anha. That, you know, they are being told that if you repent, that is something good for you. You know, you, you've done a mistake and, you know, you shared the secret of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa You should not have let it out. And so, you know, it, that you know, it's very important that, you know, that you we check our words and the state of heart but if you cooperate against him then indeed Allah is his protector and Jibreel and the righteous of the believers and angels moreover are his assistants perhaps his lord if the prophets um, perhaps his lord if the prophet divorce you all meaning the wives are being warned that you know don't do this again because if the prophet divorced you Allah will substitute for him wives better than you now look at the qualities of the of, of women Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions and that the wives, the qualities of a good wife are submitting to Allah, believing, uh, believing, devoutly obedient, repentant, worshipping, uh, worshipping to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and traveling or, uh, you know, or fasting woman and once previously married and also virgins. So, you know, what matters here is iman and taqwa and good actions. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about the qualities of uh, the, uh, a good wife. Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, O you who have believed, protect yourselves and your families from the fire whose fuel is people and stones. How many times in these Jews have we learned now that they are a test that we need to protect? Now we've been told, protect yourselves from the, you know, uh, yourselves and your family from fire whose fuel is uh, people and stones. So we need to not only be good ourselves, but we need to protect our our family because human beings are uh, also going to be the fuel of the fire. Um, and Ibn Masood said that they are sulfur. So which stones are they in the fire? They are sulfur, which were created the day heavens and the earth were created. Um, so, and, and you know anyone who knows science will know that sulfur is flammable. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, over which are appointed angels harsh and severe, they do not they do not disobey Allah in what he commands them, but do not do what they are commanded. So, you know, the warning is for whom? For the people who believe that you better save yourselves. Yeah, otherwise you might end in fire. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the religion will become dominant, it will prevail and it will spread across the seas until the horses are heavily used in the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Meaning one event will lead to another, one battle to another until Muslim lands will spread. Meaning they will increase and grow. Then a people will come to, uh, who will read the Quran and they will have read it and they will say, uh, we have read the Quran, who's, who's read more Quran than us? Who knows more than us? The Prophet said, ask the Sahaba, you know, um, th this is how people will, you know, meaning they will, people who are going to constantly compare themselves with others. You know, I know most Quran, I have read, she hasn't read it. You know, they're going to be, you know, proud of this. So the Prophet asked the Sahaba, do you see any good in these people? The Sahaba said, no. The Prophet said, they will be from you, from this Ummah, and they will be the fuel of the fire. Ya Allah, in Ramadan, don't people do competitions? I've read this and I've read that. So this is these, you know, the people who are proud about it, they will be the fuel of the fire. This is a hadith that I read to you. Yeah, we should never be proud of the achievements that we have, even the memorization that you have done. Never be proud, action plan, never be proud of your knowledge. Yeah, that I know most. That is extremely dangerous and it leads to the hellfire. Oh, you who have disbelieved, make no excuses that day. You will only be recompensed for what you used to do. Oh, you who have believed, repent to Allah with sincere 
repentance. What is sincere repentance? That you mean it. And this is believers being addressed here. Every single of one of us, you know, we need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I need to, I, I know that I have faults in, in me. Perhaps your Lord will remove from you your misdeeds and admit you into gardens beneath its rivers flow on the day when Allah will not disgrace the Prophet and those who believed with him. Their light will proceed before them and on their right. Meaning, light will be before them and on their right as well. And underline this dua, please. Rabbana um, at the end of the ayah eight. Rabbana at nurana ala kulli shay'in qadir. That um, what will they say? They will say, "Our Lord, perfect for us our light and forgive us. Indeed, you are over all things competent." So you know, on that day, you know the excuses of people are not going to be accepted. Yeah. And there will be people who will be forgiven and rewarded. And these are the people who will have Iman, the ones who repented to Allah sincerely. You know, they were honest to themselves and they repented and became true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will be saved and they will be given light. And we know we studied about As-Sirat, didn't we? That Allah will give them light in front of them and on their right. So, O Prophet, strive against the disbelievers and the hypocrites and be harsh upon them, and their refuge is hell, and wretched is this destination. So, you see that in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, never, you know, if you read the Sira, never ever waged a war against the hypocrites with swords and arrows. Yeah, so he was harsh with them through ilm, through the teaching, but not the war. Okay. Allah presents an example of those who disbelieved the wife of Nuh and the wife of Lut. So you see here, we have evidence that the wife of Nuh -Salam, was the one who disbelieved. They, they, uh, they were two un, uh, of our righteous servants, but betrayed them. They were under two of our righteous servants, but they betrayed them. So the prophets did not avail them from Allah at all. And it was said, enter the fire to, with those who enter. So you see a lesson from here. Even if your family is righteous, that does not mean that you have a ticket to Jannah. Okay. And Allah presents an example of those who believe the wife of Fir'aun when she said, Rabbi ibn li indika baitan fil Jannah. Underline this ayah as well, please. And this is ayah number 11. When she, the wife of Fir'aun, she made the dua. My Lord built for me near you a house in paradise and save me from Fir'aun and his deeds and save me from the wrongdoing people. So you see... Um, Fir'aun was an arrogant disbeliever, right? And then I number 12, the, and the example of Maryam, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity. So we blew into her garment through our angel and she believed in the words of our Lord and his scriptures and was defiantly obedient. So you see, we, met, we see the mention of four ladies here, two, husband, two of whose husbands were righteous, but they didn't benefit. And two other ladies, one whose husband was Fir'aun, who was arrogant, who was a disbeliever, and the other one who had no husband. So what are we being, what is the lesson that me and you are going to take? We should be like Asiya uh, the wife of Fir'aun, and, uh, and Maryam. Yeah, and you see, uh, you know, we have the habit as women, we blame our husbands for certain things, you know, he doesn't like, you know, especially women have this complaint that, you know, he doesn't like me wearing my hijab, he doesn't like me wearing my abaya. And, you know, uh, the thing is, you know, if you really want to do something, sometimes it is your inner desire yourself, and then you blame your husband for that. You know, you, what you can do is start wearing at least modest clothes, right? Start with that. And, you know, somewhere you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change the situation but you know you really want to choose yourself when you have that determination that you want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make easy for us the ways and you know no one can be more tyrant than the wife uh, than the, the than Firaun as a husband okay and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> is mentioning about Maryam alayhi salam that you know uh, Maryam alayhi salam was patient and she was steadfast uh, and she held, she, she was firm in her belief and she was knowledgeable. So these were the qualities of Maryam alayhi salam. And you see, um, according to the hadith, the best women of Jannah are, number one, 
خديجة بنت خويلد نمبر 2 فاطمة بنت محمد رضي الله عنها and then مريم بنت عمران and آسيا بنت مزاهم مزاهم I think yeah مزاهم آسيا بنت مزاهم so these women are the best women in Jannah and and you know all these women they had one element is sabr they had the element of sabr in them and that is so much essential and to be obedient in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of these uh, make us have these qualities of these women and alhamdulillah we started the juice with the story of a woman and we end the story with the story of the woman so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to be from these um, women and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us these qualities alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah, we've completed, you know, I was panicking that we have so many surahs to cover. Alhamdulillah, we've done, I, you know, I, I'm saying we don't give justice, but at least the brief explanation, you have some idea, you can go and do your own research. Jazakumullahu um, khairan. Subhanakallah, wa bihamdika, shadu la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka, 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 atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Thank you.